In this lesson, we will be discussing elementary forces between the particles and describe what the standard model of elementary particles really is. All forces around us can be identified as one of four basic interactions. So let's, uh, let's go over them. The first one is the electromagnetic force. It is responsible for the fact that positive and negative charges attract each other, whereas same sign uh, electric charges repel. It is the force that makes up atoms and molecules and the whole structure of matter around us. In terms of elementary particles, a force corresponds to the exchange of a force particle, a boson. This means that when two electrons repel each other, this is due to the fact that they exchange a force particle. You can compare this somehow uh, in the sense of playing football. The team players are the particles, and the force between them, the way they move, uh, is uh, predicted by the way that the ball is moving in the game. The ball is the force particle in this picture and makes the players interact. The force particle of the electromagnetic force is the photon, light. A photon has no mass, but consists of pure energy. Electrons and protons feel each other due to a continuous exchange of zillions and zillions of these photons. Now the second force. The second force is called the strong force. It is the force that keeps the quarks together to form a proton or a neutron. It is also responsible for keeping protons themselves together which, by the way, each have a positive electric charge, but yet they stick together to form heavy atoms, and the strong force is responsible for that. The force particle of the strong force is called the gluon. Quarks continuously exchange gluons, and by doing so, are bounded together. And third, we have uh, the force called the weak force. This is a force responsible for radioactive decay and plays a crucial role in the burning of the sun, for example. The weak force is, as its name suggests, very weak compared to the strong force and the electromagnetic force. There are actually three force particles, three bosons responsible for the weak interaction. These are the W plus, the W minus boson and the Z boson. They are similar to the photon, but have one large difference. They have a non-zero mass. These W and Z bosons were discovered for the first time in 1983 in CERN near Geneva. And lastly, the fourth force, perhaps the most familiar one, is gravity. And it's the force that lets the apple fall down on the floor and keeps the moon and the earth together. We don't understand gravity in terms of exchange particles, as a matter of fact. The reason is that gravity is an extremely weak force for an individual particle. And only with a whole set of particles like the whole Earth or the Moon, you see the effect of gravitation. And a quantum model, uh, in terms of elementary particles, of gravity does not yet exist. And theoreticians are very busy in trying to find one. The three quantum forces, electromagnetism, the strong and the weak force, determine the dynamics of the interactions between the elementary particles. They provide, besides gravity, the physics laws of our universe. These laws are written down in what we call the standard model of elementary particles. And the standard model of particle physics was developed during the, the late 1960s by Glashow, Weinberg and Salam. However, at that time, the mathematical description was only consistent, was not consistent, I have to say. And basically the model at that time made ridiculous predictions when calculations were made. It produced, its, it produced infinities all the time. And this changed drastically with the insight of Martinus Veldman and Gerard het Hoofd in 1970. These Dutch physicists were able to make the math mathematical description consistent and the infinities in the calculations were gone. However, with one major consequence, the mathematical trick only works in the case that elementary particles don't have a mass. And here the Higgs particle enters the scene. Because the solution written down by Peter Higgs, François Engler and Robert Braut already in 1964 and 1965 is to describe the mass of particles in an alternative way. And one way to look at it is the following. 
as I just said, the mathematical trick of Feldman and that Hoeft works for particles with no mass. And the trouble is that if particles don't have a mass, they fly away. They fly away through empty space with the speed of light. And this is what Einstein already predicted with his special relativity. You cannot create stable matter if the constituent particles have zero mass. And the Higgs mechanism is a way out and simply postulates that empty space is not empty at all. It's actually filled with a continuous background field. We call this uh, the Higgs field. And with this field, all particles have to transverse it. And by transversing it, they interact with this background field. And they effectively, they slow down. It's like they have to transverse a fluidum or a syrup or, or um, a, a substance. And uh, they slow down. And in that way, uh, the particles don't move anymore with the speed of light. They slow down and we interpret this as the particle has obtained a mass. So the mass of the particles is not due to the fact that they have an intrinsic mass or a property called mass, no. The mass of a particle is brought about by the interaction of the particles with this subst substance, with this background field, with the Higgs field. And the larger the, the, the interaction with that field, the larger the mass of the particle is. So, for example, the top quark apparently has an extremely strong interaction with this Higgs field, and hence we say it is heavy. And the up quark does not feel the Higgs background field very much, and therefore it is light, it has a small effective mass. But how do we know that it all makes sense? The Higgs theory predicts that the background field actually may have a fluctuation, a quantum fluctuation, as predicted by quantum theory. And these quantum fluctuations on top of the Higgs field corresponds to what we call the Higgs particle. So, a discovery of the Higgs particle indicates the existence of a Higgs field, and that that field is responsible for the mass of all the other particles, and ultimately of all atoms, of matter, of you and me. And it was therefore a big triumph of particle physics when the Higgs particle was discovered in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in, in 2012. It was found to have a mass of 125 GeV, approximately equivalent to 125 proton masses. Currently, scientists are very busy in understanding if all the measured properties of the Higgs particle correspond to the predictions of the standard model. And only one tiny deviation from these predictions uh, of the Higgs particles means that our understanding of, of where mass comes from fails completely. <laughs>